You have found it, the tip of the spear in the fight for human liberty worldwide, as meager and meek as we are, we're the best there is. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. It is Monday evening. It, of course, is Monday, uh, February 13th, 2012. And Charlotte Thompson Iserby, uh, who exposed, of course, Skull and Bones and was the head of policy at the Department of Education. She is going to be joining us coming up after the first break. We've also got a little uh, tidbit from 1983 when uh, Ron Paul was part of the congressional baseball team playing for the Republicans and, of course, won the game for him, running a bunch of different uh, home runs. Of course, he's the only member of the congressional baseball team also to ever knock it out of the park. We've got a clip of him uh, hitting a home run coming up right before we go to break, so stay with us for that. Uh, something sports fans I'm sure will enjoy out there. Hey, I'm suddenly a fan of baseball. I've always been a fan of baseball, but when Ron Paul's involved in it, it's even better in that Astros uniform. Okay, let's get into the really serious news up front here. Fox News is reporting it. We told you this was coming. Israel has admitted that they're hiring al-Qaeda terror groups to stage terror attacks inside Iran. And we've had the Brookings Institute and others say a false flag would be great to be blamed uh, on Iran. We've had the Rand Corporation talking about it. And sure enough, Israel accuses Iran of bombings in Georgia and India while Iran rejects the claims. The violence came as a result of comments by uh, Israeli officials have uh, raised concerns Israel might be preparing an imminent strike on Iranian nuclear facilities. U.S. and other Western countries have been pressuring Israel to give sanctions more time. Whether Iran did this or not, it's all very, very suspect when the neocons and others are calling for false flag provocations. That We even have the head of national security, Mr. Clapper, putting out a policy report saying a provocation to blame on Iran would be useful. This from our own government that staged the events that led us to Vietnam, the Gulf of Tonkin, Operation Ajax, and 53 to overthrow Iran staging terror attacks. And then, of course, Israel attacking the USS Liberty uh, to blame it on the Egyptians and Israel bombing U.S. Uh, hotels and movie theaters in Egypt uh, to blame it on Egypt. I mean, who knows what's really going on here? We'd be schmucks, to use a, a Yiddish term, if we just didn't look at Israel to be the possible culprit uh, in these terror attacks. Doesn't mean it couldn't be Iran. We're not big fans of the authoritarian rule of the mullahs either. I'm kind of like the founding fathers. I don't trust government. I don't like government. <laughs> I don't like any of these governments. And I don't believe a damn thing they say. Excuse the French. Okay, uh, let me go ahead and continue here with the next report. Investigation. Media Matters conspires with White House to influence news. Tucker Carlson's uh, Daily Caller came up with this information. Uh, that's like announcing that the sun is yellow and water is blue. But uh, yes, it's true. George Soros and the White House, according to the documents they've gotten, completely run Media Matters, who poses as a nonpartisan uh, media watchdog, but really is a, a group of anti-American scum demonizing anybody who isn't for absolute total Sovietization and gun grabbing and every form of slavery you can imagine. A very nasty group whose memos got leaked a year ago that they plan to infiltrate alternative media and Fox News and destroy them from within. So I am pretty creeped out by these folks. And of course, you know right now that the reason you're seeing Obama worship coming uh, out of uh, News Corps with Mike Huckabee saying he, Obama's a great Christian, good American, trying to take good care of us, is because Rupert Murdoch is basically being blackmailed. Uh, there have been criminal indictments of his staff and minions in England, more arrests uh, over the weekend, uh, eight different staff of his different outfits, and there's open Justice Department investigation of Rupert Murdoch and his family that own News Corps. So uh, that'll teach him to let Glenn Beck talk bad about, well, you know who. And it's not that I'm a fan of News Corps. They're big, fake, neocon globalists. But to have a Justice Department that ran fast and furious, a Justice Department caught paid off by big banks in the Cayman Islands to stop criminal investigations of money laundering, a Justice Department that makes Al Capone look like a choir boy, well, it's just a joke. And so even if Rupert Murdoch's a tyrant and involved in low-level corruption, that's nothing compared to the real mafia that's trying to destroy his media empire. Because if they can bring down Fox News, who's gotten rich 
as posing as conservatives and libertarians and patriots. They're taking down the head so they can go after the rest of the real patriotic media after them. So I'm telling you, Rupert Murdoch, and I know your people watch, Roger Ailes, all of you, you got to release all the Fast and Furious info, the drug running info now. Doesn't matter if Bush was involved previously. This is about survival. You've got to go after them on all their other crimes, the money laundering, or you're done. You're not going to play games with these guys. They want you in prison for paying off police for, you know, info on people and wiretaps. And I'm not saying your crimes are good. You've been caught doing it. But compared to running guns into Mexico to blame the Second Amendment, I'm sorry, tyrants cannot carry out justice against somebody. You know, may 10 guilty men go free that one innocent man not go to prison. You cannot get justice from this Justice Department. It's like having the devil run heaven or something. It's like saying Superman works for Lex Luthor. It's an oxymoron. It's butt backwards. It's creepy, man, I tell you. I, I got called about a year ago for a news article they were doing in their watchdog by one of the chief uh, editors and writers over at Media Matters. And I said, listen, out of the gates, you guys work for George Soros and, and the White House. And the guy started laughing and saying, that's ridiculous. So I pulled up in front of me on the computer federal filings for nonprofits. And I showed him where Soros was giving millions, and the guy started laughing at me. I guess he thought I was the general public that, 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 that just buys whatever crap they shovel over at Snopes and Media Matters. I mean, I could set up some group called Media Analyst uh, Incorporated or uh, Media... There is that in the real world. I'm, no connection to the real group. I'm just... Uh, you know, media expert analysis gold level. You know, whatever baloney name. You know that that and, and have we are absolutely nonpartisan or dedicated to the truth. And then I could tell you Easter bunnies were real or whatever. I mean, I mean, it, it, it's just amazing what comes out of these people. And it is creepy to know they're after me. I mean, it's super creepy. So stand with us, folks, because we stand against this guy. Okay, uh, continuing here, global media. Uh, promotes Syrian activists begging for military invention. Paul Watson called me and said, I'm going to do this article on this guy today. And I said, yeah, I've seen him on uh, CIA 360 with Anderson uh, Aster Cooper, the Aster error on there. Or is that the guy that runs Daily Caller that's the Aster error? Or he's one of the other big errors. The point is, is that I've seen this guy on different news channels, and, and in one take, he's like, we are being attacked. I am Habib. The, the, you know, the, the, save us in Syria from what Assad is doing. And then I cut to another clip, and he's like, oh, yes, we're here. Everything is in the end of complete bombardment. I mean, he's an actor from England, and so you can't believe any of it. It's like, they say Assad has killed no one. He has killed 40,000 today. I saw it. And then they cut to him on another show. He's like, I am here to tell you Assad is getting you. I mean, they can't even have their actor. We all know from Team America, they hire actors to ladle out BS. It's like, it's not about being gay, Gary. I mean, they can't even have an actor who sticks with the same voice in this whole deal. So we're going to do some uh, video work on that in the next few days. We're going to pull those, pull those clips. But... Um, He's just begging for the U.N. invasion, which is now the Arab League's begging for and is all being lined up. And again, I'm not a fan of Assad, but I'm not a fan of Al-Qaeda either, who they're putting in charge there like they did in Libya. I mean, how dumb do these people think we are? America, America, oh yeah, fighting for your freedom. TSA sticking the hands down your pants, groping grandma's underwear. Oh yeah, microwave ovens, IRS takes your house with no due process. Well, that's not America. <laughs> Is that funny? I should actually, actually, actually record my own America, but actually write it up well and not just go off the top of my head. It's not about being gay, Gary. Look, I hadn't watched Team America in like six, seven years, and I, uh, I made the mistake of getting the not-rated version and putting it in this Saturday as I was jogging on the treadmill for an hour and 50 minutes. And let me tell you, not a family movie. <laughs> I've never seen puppets do this. I never thought of puppets doing things like this. It's ridiculous. 
Oh, Hans Briggs, buddy, come on in. Get me Alec Baldwin. Get me Sean Penn. They have both been very useful to me. So, Kim Jong-il almost sounds like some kind of uh, Elmer Fudd type character. Be very careful. I've been hunting for wabbits. All right, I'm digressing here. I apologize. This is InfoWars Nightly News. This is what happens when your teleprompter free. It's why the globalists make sure all the corporate whore media is all teleprompter fed. A police union demands info on 9-11 toxic debris. Well, I mean, Christina Todd Whitman admitted years later she was ordered to say the air was safe to breathe. Of course, I was on the air the day after 9-11 saying, get real respirators down there. It doesn't matter if they say it's safe to breathe. That building's made of asbestos. And of course, now thousands of police and first responders have gotten cancer. All the police dogs died five, six years ago. And uh, New York City's police union is demanding more information about effects of toxic debris from 9-11 attacks. But I thought I was a conspiracy theory. I mean, the government told me it was safe, and they never lie. Now, let's get into the eugenics portion of the evening, because that's what runs this whole system, is the globalist playing uh, God. That is a good graphic. I hadn't seen that. A sperm with a head of a skull swimming towards the New World Order's global death or democide. I know, but coming up with that, I don't think anybody's ever put a skull on the head of a sperm. It's not about sperm, Gary. <laughs> All right. I apologize. It's a family show, but this is just too much. And you know what? I'm getting more and more gallows humor here because if you want to get down to the nitty gritty, I'm pretty freaked out right now. Uh, all right. This is just what came across my desk today without even looking. Without even looking. Let me just read you the headlines, and I'll go through them each in order. In 1984, a World Bank report contemplated sterilization vans and camps, and they said once they bankrupted everybody, they, they want a post-industrial world, they'll have social workers that come and say, if you're poor, you can't have your kids, and then you're all going to be sterilized, and, uh, the, and they're going to put you in camps as well. I mean, you can go to my website, go to Infowars.com, read the article, and link to the World Bank who has this posted and is proud of it. Male and female sterilization IUD can be made more readily available through mobile facilities such as sterilization vans in Thailand or periodic camps such as vasectomy and uh, other surgeries they have in India. And, of course, it turned out the forced sterilization of India was going on at that time. You want U.S. taxpayer money? Got to get sterilized. And again, a lot of folks are like, well, good, to get rid of those brown people. What comes around goes around. This stuff's going on here as well, through your water. Oh, and we have some articles on that. In fact, let me skip over the Daily Mail article first and go to the next piece. Michigan is breeding poverty. And the Detroit News uh, calls for sterilants to be added to the water. Since the national attention is on birth control, here's my idea like it's your idea you just got. If we want to fight poverty, reduce violent crime, and bring down our embarrassing dropout rate, we should swap contraceptives for, for fluoride in Michigan's drinking water. Well, let me give you a little newsflash. Fluoride does reduce fertility and does cause DNA and chromosomal damage. And, of course, we have the White House science czar, David Rockefeller. They've already been putting it in the water for a very long time. And it actually came out that they're now in England and areas of the U.S., giving girls Norplant under the skin without parental consent, 12 and 13 year olds. And telling the kids, don't tell your parents we did this. And they're giving them vaccines in California, as you know, without telling the parents and telling the kids not to tell them. Think the government's out of control yet? It's gonna get a lot worse. Uh, but here's the uh, Daily Mail article, and they're reporting on a Sunday Times of London report of top a uh, eugenicist, president of Yale, was a fanatic eugenicist in the worst meaning of the word, and uh, during World War II and then after during the Cold War, had emergency relocation plans for the elite, Aryan elite of the British uh, academia to get them to the United States, but, but they would only evacuate the, uh, the uh, wonderful bloodlines of those folks, according to them. Okay, moving right along uh, from that, we move to Whitney Houston. Now, we've put a viral video out of uh, titled Secret of Whitney Houston's Death Discovered, and uh, it was not any illegal drug. She survived all that. 
And I'm not saying illegal drugs are good. The point is she survived all that. It is the legal prescription drugs that kill over 150,000 people a year, not counting the 100,000 plus that die from other drug interactions. And this is all on record. Natural News has written articles linking to the government's own documents. We've written articles detailing it. Here's Paul Watson's today. Establishment media hides fact that Big Pharma killed Whitney Houston. Singer died after taking a cocktail of antidepressant drugs. Marilyn Monroe thought it was okay to take prescription drugs, even though evidence shows it killed her. Uh, Kennedy was on a bunch of prescription drugs and thought it was okay because his doctor gave it to him. Uh, we also have Elvis thinking, you know, oh, he was a DEA honorary agent, was against illegal drugs, and he says, arrest everybody, throw the key away, even though it just sends him to a college of crime to learn how to use more drugs and rob people. But God, Elvis, God bless his soul, nice guy. Um, he uh, also, of course, uh, died connected to prescription drugs. So it's a scourge, many times more dangerous than illegal drugs. But that's all synthetic so they can patent it. But it's also the big mega drug companies connected to the big banks that actually launder the money from the illegal drugs. So they only make illegal drugs illegal because they're naturally occurring, coca, opium, poppies, marijuana, because they can't have a monopoly on it, and that's why those drugs are illegal. So there's the bottom line on that piece of news. And I got criticized Sunday when it was already being reported Sunday morning that it was uh, prescription drugs that killed her for putting that video out. Now it's totally confirmed, no illegal drugs in her system, but all the synthetic versions of it that are souped up. Okay, shifting gears to Ron Paul. Uh, Ron Paul, I love him. You're not supposed to call election fraud when you see it. But it's happened in Maine now, and he said there's big anomalies. It happened in Iowa, as we've proven. It happened in Nevada. He's number one in the polls. Exit polls show he's winning. But when 2 to 4% are reporting, that means 90-plus percent haven't reported, the corporate whore media is announcing him the winner. The corporate whore media is announcing that Mitt Romney uh, is the winner and uh, that Ron Paul is not the winner. So that's what they're doing, and it's disgusting. And even the New York Times uh, is having to admit that he could still win Maine, and he's now going to uh, contest that. Now let me take you to today's quote. A total population of 250 to 300 million people, a 95% decline from present levels would be ideal. Ted Turner, 1996, Autobahn Magazine. And I actually have a copy of that in my film, America Destroyed by Design, an actual video of Autobahn magazine where he actually said it. I mean, we've checked that quote. Ted Turner said that, and it is absolutely disgusting. He also made comments at a press dinner about we're useless eaters, kill the general public. And that's in all the official memorandums, like State Department Memorandum 200. Use food against you as a weapon. Uh, it's truly disgusting. Uh, some of the other uh, articles... Uh, that we've uh, got here that tie into the Daily Quote. Again, Detroit columnist calls for sterilants and drinking water to curb uh, poverty numbers. Proposal that aims to stop welfare dependents from breeding poverty would poison everyone with birth control sprinkled in the water. And again, they always tell the middle class, oh, we're doing this to the poor, like, like you're going to get involved in it. Or we've only got drones over Iraq for them. Oh, now the drones are for us. And I saw a national poll uh, that came out today that was saying... Uh, that the majority of Americans, the vast majority, don't want drones domestically. You just like thinking of it as a vestigial power you've got killing other people. No, it's all going to be used uh, against you. And another report here, the Rothschilds want Iran's banks. This is also at Infowars.com, uh, and they're announcing that they want to take those over once they've been bombed the Stone Age. And another one, EU airlines, carbon tax stirs resentment. China has already barred its airlines from complying with the requirement. And this is a, a new global corporate tax paid to the private central banks on the world's travelers. They want to shut down travel. That's all part of their Agenda 21 uh, system. All right. As we go to break, here is a clip from 1983 with the congressional baseball teams, the Republicans and Democrats playing each other. There is no uh, footage that's been found or put out uh, where Ron Paul is the only member of congressional baseball teams they've had since the 20s to knock it out of the park. The congressional website says he is the only member to do that. Uh, but in the short video we have, we're not going to show it all to you, but it's on YouTube, he knocks it all the way to the fence and runs home runs three times. So here is one of those right now. 
the gear back on. This is a big out here. Ron Paul, a strong batter, a right hand hitter. Has a chance to pick up a couple of runs here and uh, really get the Republicans back in this contest after giving up six in the top of the first. A little bit below the knees, two and nothing. They're playing him very deep, as you'll notice. They're almost back to the back to the scoreboards right now. Sinar is deep, shaded around the left center field. There it goes. This one has hit a ton out to left That's center done. field. It is no. going to stay in the ballpark, however. Sinar picks it up, relays it back in. And that one makes it a 6 to 4 ball game. That's the kind of shot that makes it count. We were brought up loving our country and our Constitution. That in the United States, of America, we were free. And that's an attitude that we've tried to instill in our children. I met my wife while uh, in the Air Force. I was a combat pilot in Vietnam. I served in Desert Storm as a commander. When I graduated from the academy, I took the oath of office. Uh, and as a commander, I administered that oath to many people. Now I, I wonder about the understanding people have of our Constitution and I think about our candidates for President of the United States. Uh, it's interesting to see the support Ron Paul gets from the military. And if we think back to the code of conduct uh, and people raising their right hand that they were going to support and defend the Constitution of the United States, why would those same people support in great numbers Ron Paul? I think it's because they know that he supports the Constitution of the United States. It doesn't mean you have to go to war to do it. Uh, it means you have to understand what the Constitution is and be a supporter inside of your own country, whether you're in the military or not, of that Constitution and make the United States strong. And Ron Paul does that. That's his feeling. That's his thrust. And that's why if you look at the percentages that support him and the military, it's huge. Why is that? Because they've raised their right hands and they're putting their lives on the line for us here in the United States. And they know that Ron Paul does the same. Greetings, fellow Info Warriors. Alex Jones here announcing the first of many trips that I'm gonna take across this wonderful United States that we live in. And we get so busy here at InfoWars.com, the nightly news, the daily radio show, the documentary films, and all the other things we're doing that I tend to never go out and give speeches anymore. And I've got a lot of ideas bubbling around in my head about the history of the New World Order, what makes them tick and how to defeat them. So I'm titling this key speech I'm going to give. It'll run around two hours long, Blueprint to Defeat the New World Order. And we're also going to have a surprise premiere of a short documentary film we've been working on at the event. First off, I'm going to be going to Dallas, Texas, Sunday, February 19th, 2012, to the historic Lakewood Theater. And the next Sunday, February 26th, I'm going to be in Orlando, Florida. You can find out more about the events and buy tickets at infowars.com forward slash events. Now, unfortunately, every event I've ever had, we've had to turn people away. So get your tickets early at infowars.com forward slash events. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on in this world. And the craziest of all is this explosive awakening. I can't wait to meet you and shake your hand. I'll see you in Dallas and I'll see you in Orlando. Infowars.com forward slash events. And we are back again. Thank you for joining us on this Monday, February 13th, 2012 edition. We are now joined by Charlotte Thompson Iserby. Uh, she, of course, was the head of policy of the number two position at the Department of Education. Uh, she'd worked in the civil service uh, internationally before that. Her father and grandfather, of course, were members of Skull and Bones. And information that she gave to Anthony Sutton uh, was used to basically break Skull and Bones wide open. And of course, we've interviewed her on the radio covering that and produced a special report uh, here for viewers of InfoWars Nightly News. 
and viewers at PrisonPlanet.tv. But I wanted to get her on today because she's up in Maine to give us uh, her view on what happened with Ron Paul. Ron Paul has had elections stolen from him before. We know in Iowa, uh, the key areas like Ames, the university where he was polling 50 to 60 percent, just didn't show up, even though they were voted at the precinct level. Carl Rove said the trucks were lost with the ballots. They're not carried by trucks. They vote and then post the results. Uh, the same thing has now happened in Nevada. Uh, they have just a couple percentage points reporting, and they said it was Mitt Romney. Uh, and now it's been so brazen uh, in Maine that Ron Paul has come out and said there's evidence uh, of fraud and that they are investigating it. Uh, and the New York Times also had the headline today, could Ron Paul still win in Maine? So a good job to Ron Paul. He doesn't like to look like a sore loser, but when there's open fraud, uh, you've got to say something about it. So she wants to speak to that. Then we're going to get into education, why they're attacking the family, uh, what this outcomes-based dog training is instead of educating uh, people or, 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 or teaching folks how to learn and be open-minded. Uh, they're basically just conditioning them uh, or, or uh, brainwashing them with training instead of education. Now, they call the training education today. So we're going to be breaking that down with her uh, and a lot more today. And we're also seeing this trend I want to ask her about before she leaves us of where schools are now giving Norplant and abortions and even Gardasil shots to children as young as 11 and 12 without parental consent. And in England, they're telling them, don't even tell your parents. So this is the state taking over the family. Everything has really gone into high gear now. Uh, and uh, she's going to break that down for us because she's one of the best known, probably the biggest whistleblower ever. With her book, Deliberate Dumbing Down, that I should add, was out of print for over a year, the big Dallas phone book size one. She's come out with a updated and abridged uh, version that's only 500 and something pages long and available, I should add, at Infowars.com. Give this to every educator you know. Give this to you, uh, the people on your school board. Give this to your pastor. This is full of documents and proves that it is a deliberate program to dumb down our society. Unrivaled work. And, and by the way, if you don't want a hard copy to give somebody, she's been gracious enough to put her book up for free on her website and uh, to put up a lot of internal documents uh, concerning the dumbing down that have never before been seen. Charlotte, thank you for joining us from your home in Maine. Good to have you with us. Well, thank you very much, Alex. And it is a big day. Uh, it's a big day in Maine uh, for two reasons, uh, which really do affect the country, both these reasons. Uh, the Ron Paul fiasco uh, probably didn't come as much of a surprise to any of us who understand our Republican Party here that's totally controlled international socialists as it might come to other people around the country who still think of Maine as uh, being a conservative, rugged, uh, rock-bound coast state. Uh, ever since 1970, we've been going down the hill with restructured government, regionalism, everything you could possibly think of. Uh, our, school, our schools got the gold medal from the U.S. Department of Ed in the 1970s for accepting most, most federal funding of the values-destroying programs. So that gives you an idea how Maine has changed. Uh, we're leading the troops now across the country, I think, and I'm going to explain that, not just through the Ron Paul fiasco, but through information I received today, which deals with a complete takeover of our education system. Uh, there will no longer be private schools that are autonomous. They will be controlled by the federal government through tax money. This all is coming under school choice. I'm so pleased I got the information an hour ago. I'm not pleased with the subject, but that I'm able to get this out to the people across the country. So that's what we're going to talk about. Now, Ron Paul, he, of course, he won in Maine. And the fact that uh, he doubled the number of his votes from four years ago tells you something very, very interesting about uh, Ron Paul versus uh, Mitt Romney, doesn't it? Uh, he was, they say, 200 votes short. Well, it, it would be quite easy, you know, to uh, have a 200 uh, short vote uh, if you would just eliminate one large, not, not that much population, but a large county, Washington County up north, where you have most of the Ron Paul people. Uh, 
So uh, there's no question in my mind, and uh, I can come out without sound, sounding like sour grapes. Uh, and I don't think Ron, Ron Paul's always such a gentleman. Uh, finally, he's indicated that there may have been some hanky panky. Uh, we'll we'll get to the bottom of this. And uh, the most interesting, most important part of this, though, folks, is that. Of all the research that I've done, I've been involved since the 70s, and I've been lived around the world. I've lived, been in the Foreign Service, Department of Education under Reagan, got fired, all that stuff, wrote books. Uh, there's only one candidate that can save this country from being moved into something I know people do not want to hear. They've taken this word out of the dictionary, actually, haven't they? Moved into a communist system of government, A through Z without firing a shot. And I'm going to go through that with everybody today. And it doesn't make me happy to be able to give you this documentation. It has happened, folks. Good, you know, maybe it had to happen. You'll know it's true when it happens to you. It has happened to date. And Charlotte, I want to get into that, but since you raised the Ron Paul issue, uh, last week on the Nightly News, we showed the graphs where on average he got about a 120% increase from 2008 in every state, in some places over a 260% uh, percent increase or two and a half times or more what he got in every state, including Maine, he got over 100% more. But Nevada, he got the exact same amount of votes that he got four years ago. Uh, and the reports coming out of fraud. But then in Iowa, we were told there was fraud. And then three weeks later, the Associated Press had to admit they're throwing the whole Iowa thing out, but just giving it to Santorum. So now that election fraud's being admitted, the, they just move on. It's like Stalin said, I don't care who you vote for as long as I, as long as I count the votes. But we have all these numbers, and look at how they've ignored him uh, in the debates and giving him, you know, 89 seconds of the CBS debate or the least amount and all the others. How they kept saying he can't win. And despite all that, he's still coming in first, second, or third place. No doubt he's the front runner. All over the country, Ron Paul signs are everywhere. He's winning all the straw polls, all the other polls. We're seeing fraud out in the open, and we're seeing Mitt Romney, Mr. Carbon Tax, Mr. Open Borders, Mr. Abortion, Mr. New World Order. Uh, being pushed by the system. It, it, you gave me a gift a few years ago when Rob Dew came back from interviewing you. It was a, a license plate from Maine, Ron Paul <laughs> Vacation Land. We're going to show the uh, viewers that. But I mean, it really is sad that uh, Ron Paul is the real winner and the Soviet style globalists are going to steal it from him. Yes. And I, as you really finished my sentence for me, Alex, that's pretty good. You know, you usually aren't able to uh, hang on to the end of my sentences as well as you did then. But anyway, you did. You finished what I was going to say. Uh, Ron Paul, I've been, uh, I've, I've been this for years, as I pointed out before. Ron Paul absolutely uh, is the only candidate that will save our, our way of life in the United States. And I want to point out that's a way of life for all of us, not just Republicans and Democrats and Catholics and Baptists and atheists. It, it, we're all one. We're Americans. We want to live under the Constitution. We don't want to live under UN Agenda 21. By the way, Rosa Kari did a beautiful job yesterday explaining what's going on out there with uh, sustainable development and all, which is nothing but communism. Uh, so Ron Paul's the only one, and that's why they're terrified of him, because they can depend on Santorum and uh, Gingrich and, and Romney and all the rest of them. They can, they can be depended on to implement uh, the, the uh, international socialist, communist, totalitarian system, which uh, Rowan Gaither at the Ford Foundation told Norman Dodd in the hearings in the early 50s was the plan to merge the United States with the Soviet Union. And that is exactly what we're looking at right now. And what I wanted to talk about, and I don't understand why this screen is black, but it is, and maybe it means, I don't know whether you can still see me. No, Alex. no, we can. You're doing great joining us you from Maine via. What I, what I want to talk about, what happened today uh, uh, verifies, and I wish it didn't, all the work all of us have done in regard to school choice. I'm going to read you something from the Maine Teachers Association. 
one of our good teachers, who's a great activist, uh, gave this to me an hour before the show. And uh, it, 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 I'll, read, I'll just read it. Here we go. Okay. Uh, news brief. Leading the way to great public schools for every Maine student. Our governor, who we really thought was going to be a good conservative, has turned out to be everything but, right? He's totally controlled by the neoconservative Heritage Foundation and all of those groups. We have to remember that the left is having the right do its work for them right now. They have always worked together. There's no difference between the left and the right in this country. And as long as people believe there is, we can never solve this problem. They divide and conquer. So here we go. LePage, Governor LePage attacks profession and public education. Governor Paul LePage announced an education agenda that continues his attacks on the profession and public education. This is a synopsis of his plan. Teacher evaluation would be altered to enhance management authority and control of the profession. The definition of a probationary teacher who could be terminated with broad discretion is expanded to include a non-probationary teacher who demonstrates two consecutive years of ineffectiveness. The new definition of probationary teacher would go into effect this year. Evaluation systems must include multiple measures of effectiveness. This is for school to work, including student achievement as a significant factor, must be conducted regularly and must provide specific, timely and relevant feedback. These evaluation systems are to be used for making personnel and staffing decisions, including reductions in force. Now, this is the biggie. An open enrollment school choice would be authorized, allowing students to attend the school of their choice subject to minor restrictions. Let me point out here, this is all tax supported. That means that all the public school, the private schools, the Catholic schools, the charter schools, the alternative schools, because they're all going to be re receiving tax money, which means they're going to have to adopt the international national federal assessment system. And let me stop you right there before you go further, because people here about making teachers do their job, all this stuff, getting rid of public education, sounds good, as you pointed out, but what they're really doing is saying Bill and Melinda Gates put in maybe 1% of the money, the government puts in the rest, and they're taking over all the private schools, just like through faith-based initiative, they're federalizing all the major uh, denominations of churches. Exactly. This is this centralized system, and you notice that Obama came out last week and said he's pardoning people with no child left behind, as if he can pardon states. It was always to test, as you pointed out, the dog training to make sure they were dumbing you down. That's so of right. course they're going to pardon that the test scores are going down, because as, as you've pointed out, that's what this is all really about. Please continue. Yeah, they don't, they don't want people. Oh, James Block, one of the leaders, said it's really not fair that some people should uh, be brighter than other people. We've all got to be equal. You know, it's sort of what you call the redistribution of brains. Uh, so here we go. Open enrollment school choice authorized for students to attend the school of their choice. Doesn't that sound nice? Okay, now, here we go. Students can elect to attend public, private, religious, or for-profit schools. Now, get this, and don't forget, the minute you take tax money, you're controlled, and you will take the national assessment, which is 60% attitudinal, all about the environment, all about humanism, no God, no nothing. Okay, now, students can elect to attend any school they want, really. Funding? from the state and local taxpayers at the state tuition rate would follow the student. That's school to work. So if he's going to be a welder, the funding will go there. I work a bath iron works or whatever. He's going to whatever. And they admit school they districts. want to tell people what they're going to be, but let's expand. People who said this wouldn't happen, look at how they're telling the Baptist and Catholic churches and everybody, you're going to put... Uh, in vending machines, morning after pills, you're going to hire people that aren't even Christian or part of your denomination. You're going to teach sex ed. They're already taking everything over. That's right. Now we go on, it says school districts and private schools approved to receive public tuition funding can choose to become schools of choice by opening their enrollment to students from other districts. Statutory language that prohibits public money from going to private religious schools is expressly removed. 
That means all laws that prohibited tax money from going to private religious schools are removed. That violates First Amendment. That yes, violates what this country was founded on. And that is the complete takeover of private education and religion right there. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Boom. And notice, Charlotte, they're coming out with four shots now. They're coming out with forced fluoride for the first time now. They're taking the gloves off. The New York Times is panicking and admitting that everybody's waking up to Agenda 21. I think they're taking the gloves off and accelerating because they're scared we're waking up. Yeah, absolutely. Yo, they are really moving fast. So anyway, well, let me let me just say here. I'm going to point after I read this. I'm gonna I'm gonna give people the recipe for this cake. Okay. Parents are responsible for student transportation. See, no, no school busing, okay? The teacher certification process, get this. First of all, I'm gonna tell you, this is pure Pavlovian BF Skinner, and I know I've studied it for 30 years, rat training. The teacher certification process would be redesigned to permit easier alternate entry into the profession for those who have the academic and content area of expertise that Colin, now get this. Given proper pedagogical training, that's Skinner, a clinical school setting, in a clinical school setting, a clinical school setting, that's the teacher is going to be watched every single movement that she makes. Does she give the candy to the child at the proper time after he gets the right answer? Okay, could make them effective teachers. When you see the word effective, E, F, F, E, C, that's Skinner. Okay, so that's, we know that that's in. Certification requirements would be strengthened for, uh, they go on with that stuff. Now, career and technical education will be enhanced by requiring school districts to adopt a common school calendar with their career and technical center requires homeschool districts, homeschool. And again, districts. now that's bringing homeschools under their control. To honor academic credit students earn at career and technical center and establish a process allowing students to earn college credits at the career and technical centers. Regionalization, that's, that's communism according to the communist Zeitlin in the Daily World in 1976. He said, regionalism is communism. I have the quote. Regionalism and collaboration among school districts will be supported by a five million fund for the efficient delivery of educational services. Now we just we just got that today. Now, Alex, people have got to look at it this way. All you housewives out there, you moms and all, or you guys who who love to mess around in the barn and build things, don't you have to have a plan, a recipe? All right, this is the recipe, and I'm going to read you what has happened. The recipe to change America from a constitutional republic with its Bill of Rights and all that, to a communist planned economy follows. We'll go through, it's very short, okay. One, regionalism. That's consolidation. People have been brilliant writers, been writing about it in this country for a long time. Nobody wanted to listen. That's the dropping of borders, the getting rid of elected officials, the creation of commissions and task forces and planning boards that don't represent us. Rosa, Corey, talked about it last night on that great program, UN Agenda 21. Regionalism is key. It's the Soviet system and they're putting it in under UN Agenda 21. Okay, number two, we needed to have the agreements with the Soviet Union. That was done by Ronald Reagan in 1985 and the Carnegie Corporation. They dealt mostly with the use of computer software, development of critical thinking and technology for school to work. Now, the method. Pavlov Skinner, that's the computer. The computer is Skinner's box. Uh, school choice was always very, very big. I started out mainly in my office. School choice, tuition tax credit, vouchers, etc. pushed by the neoconservatives and the Heritage Foundation. Even Chester Finn, who used to, he writes a lot about school choice, very involved in putting this whole agenda in right now. 30, 25 years ago, he said about tuition tax credits, he said, short of throwing money in the streets so that all the little children can go pick up the money, 
There's no way to have this without controls from the federal government. So the school choice, I just read to you that our governor is putting in across the board here, according to this today, this document, okay, that's exactly and what And let me is. stop you. If we don't like Agenda 21, UNESCO, UN run, federalization, ruining the public schools, this is a Trojan horse, not even a Trojan horse, not even hidden, to take over homeschooling everywhere. And that's what they've done in Australia, England, and now Canada, that's and right. they're trying in California. I know you know this, but for the audience who, who, may, who are new viewers and don't know, they say, oh, we're going to legalize, and it wasn't illegal to begin with, your homeschooling. We're going to do all of this, but you're now going to have to get a teaching certificate and follow our curricula. So, so right. it's a literal takeover. And these are, and basically what you hear the most about are charter schools. Charter schools have been in the works since the 60s. They came out, the idea came out of the Aspen Institute, which is an internationalist, globalist, communist organization. It came out of there. Charter schools are being used all over the world, folks. And in case you think this is a nice little local American idea, it is not. It, uh, charter schools are, ha, had to be designed, they were designed basically by public-private partnership between the corporations and the administration to set up uh, special design teams to do everything other than really academics. And uh, that, that all came under, well that was under, uh, under George Bush, but a lot of it was started under uh, Ronald Reagan. Uh, he started, Ronald Reagan, I'm sorry to have to tell you this, he was the initiator of public-private partnerships. In 1982, I was the liaison with the White House. Uh, they sent me over there to be the liaison with a public-private partnership uh, agenda, huh? And uh, it was called the Private Sector Initiative. And I asked someone there, I said, what is going on here? Isn't this corporate fascism? And this lovely lady said to me, well, I don't know that anybody ever looked at it that way. Well, I was immediately removed you know, from my job as liaison right up there with the White House. But I want people to know that it was Ronald Reagan with Ed Meese, with Weinberger, et cetera, who created the concept of public-private partnerships in order to implement the Soviet system. And it, was, and it was George Herbert Walker Bush who got us into Agenda 21 at the Rio conference That's and right. who got us into the carbon taxes, just like it's Mitt Romney now and Newt Gingrich, who supported it with Al Gore. The point is, this is what the mega corporations want. All the leftist environmentalist people need to understand. It was Ken Lay came up with the carbon tax plan. This is That's all right. a giant scam where the corporations basically merge with government. It's not true privatization. Uh, this is a total takeover where the government with select corporations picks the winners. Well, this is, this is if the Communist Manifesto spells it out very well. You know, you can tick off, you can tick off everything in the Communist Manifesto and you're going to see that that's what we're putting in including Pavlov, including evolution, teaching of evolution, including school to work, including the partnership with the government. Sure, the communists had nothing but government, but they also had industry, right? So the government had a partnership with industry. Well, what's the difference between our government having a partnership with industry? It's the same system. It's used in Cuba. It's used in Well, North let me Korea. stop you. They talk about state-run education which this is corporate fascist state run. They That's talk right. about a private central bank, a graduated income tax, uh, everything that's in the Communist Manifesto, they're now setting up here. That's absolutely correct. Now, the tragedy with this thing also is that the, the Christian, formerly helpful Christian denominations had helped us a little bit. But in the past 20 years, since Rick Warren, the big management guru, came in and he infiltrated every single evangelical church in this country, just about, and has trained them for outcomes-based, purpose-driven uh, in that philosophy, which is school to work, which is the communist system of government. That's state planning, planned economy. You can't have a planned economy without planning, programming, budgeting, management systems, total quality management, outcomes-based, results-based education. This is what Rick Warren went in and trained these, these Christian communities in. Little cells he set up all over. Then, uh, that was uh, Drucker came in and did that. Then Rick Warren took over with a purpose-driven agenda. Now, folks, this is the tragedy of the big thing. 
Back in the 70s in Maine, we got a hold of a very important paper on community education. Actually, I found it in my own school district. Hmm? And we did a lot of research and a huge two-inch binder with tabs and all. Uh, our research wasn't quite as good as the research that's at my son's website by Ruth Feld. Type Feld, F-E-L-D, into the website AmericanDeception.com. You will have the most extraordinary paper, quite lengthy, with charts and diagrams on something called community education. Community education is communism, and it was admitted to be following the design of the Chinese communists by a major community educator from Alaska in the early 70s at a big meeting in Washington on community education. It's community education is the United Nations lifelong education system with everything under the of the school district with unelected task forces. That's why they need the regionalism running everything. No elected officials. Uh, they'll have nice little groups, uh, task forces to take grandma to see the leaves in the autumn, abortion clinics, everything Alex was talking about before school to work. Now, well, Charlotte, let me way. back you up. Let me just interrupt and back you up there and add a caveat. It's come out in Rhode Island, California, Michigan, and a bunch of other states. They come in with unfunded mandates, bankrupt the town, and now they have private corporations assigned coming in, taking over, saying no more voting, and we're going to double and triple your trash pickup, your water pickup, your power pickup. And by the way, we're not going to let you have that 100 year old well anymore. It is literal corporate fascism that you're talking about. It's all here. It's all happening. In the North American Union SPP documents from BAMP Canada 2007, they got uh, sued uh, by uh, Judicial Watch. They got the documents. It said, North American stealth integration through education, through terror threat, through the threat of biological attacks, flu, and it said, using these crises, we're going to create mega regions within the countries. That's already begun. I mean, we're right. already in the North American Union, just like the euro was really set up in 1957, but they weren't told till 1999. As you pointed out, we are now in it. We're now in the new world order. That's why it's now accelerating. But I want you to talk about their end game. If, if we don't stop them, what they're planning to do. Well... Their plan is, they're doing it right now. In fact, it's going in right now. Uh, their end game is to control us in our, in our homes. We're, the whole sustainable development agenda is absolutely frightening because we're all going to be moved out of our one family homes into stack and pack, and we're going to have not a lot of deaf cars. Now the law in Germany. Now the law in Germany. Exactly. No more single and, parent homes. There was a time when I really, 20, 30 years ago, I didn't believe all of this. I really didn't. I thought it just sounded so weird. You know, they were, there were good gals out in out West who were saying to me, Charlotte, you know, these bicycle paths, I don't like the idea we have to put these bicycle paths in. She said, they, they said, you know, I have a feeling this is, they're just doing this because they're going to try to get rid of cars. And I thought these gals were sort of cuckoo. No, they're not cuckoo. This is UN Agenda 21. And uh, it's going to, this will be the community education concept fits completely into what I've been seeing out in what Rosa and uh, great, you know, Orlean Cole and Michael Shaw and all those great people out there are finding out. We've got some good people here in Maine, too, are fighting it to, uh, up in Rockland, Maine, a friend of Yeah, mine. folks are really waking up in California because they're deeper into it, as you know. It's the beta test. And, and, and when they passed last year that 20% carbon tax on all human activity, that sent the state into a cardiac arrest, people said, why are they destroying our economy? As you know, Agenda 21 states, post-industrial world. Charlotte, we've got as much time as you need. This is, this is riveting info. This is, this is what's happened to our world. Please continue. Well, I wish that I didn't have to make this announcement today, but I suppose it's, it's good. I, we always felt that people wouldn't wake up until it really happened. Uh, I've got a meeting, and perhaps a lot of you uh, listeners out there have got meetings coming up too in your little towns and they sound so good Our, ours is dresden maine with about i don't know very few residents maybe 500 or something 
and it's an old, lovely town on the Kennebec River. And uh, so they send out this um, needs assessment, really what it is, questionnaire to all of us. What do we want? I made a copy of it because I want to make sure I had it after it was, you know, went into the office. Uh, do you want, uh, do you think we need more uh, convenience stores? Do we need more apartments in this area? Do we need more, better transportation? All that stuff, right? This is exactly what Rose is talking about out there. This is UN Agenda 21. We looked at the four strange questions on it that were so obviously had nothing to do with Dresden, Maine, because first of all, we don't have uh, a lot of the services that they asked us if the services were good enough, like garbage collection. We don't have that. I knew that this came from the state planning office that probably came directly from the U out of the UN, out of the, one of the sustainable development places. But anyway, so, they have this meeting coming up on the 21st, and I'm going to go, and I'm going to take Rose's book with me. I bought, I bought a whole carton of them, and I hope everybody else will buy a whole carton of her book, Behind the Green Mask. Uh, and I'm going to get this book out, and I'm just going to stand up there, and I'm going to say, look, we don't want to be Delphied. You know, we don't want meetings that are have been predetermined in the beginning. You know what your agenda is. You know what you want. You're all unelected people. You, you know, maybe we've got a few selectmen who are working on the planning on the planning and all, but that doesn't mean they were directly elected to do that. So what we've got to, what can we do? I know folks always want to say, oh, you know, Charlotte tells us everything's so horrible and the world's going to, why does she tell us what we can do? Well, first of all, don't let me forget to tell you it's homeschool, homeschool, and don't you let them get near you with a computer. Not near you, but they, their plan is to connect your computer with the school superintendent. We have that agenda that that came in under uh, George Bush. First. Charlotte, you warned of this 20 years ago. They now admit in high school and middle school, everything done on the computer goes into a federal database and they're tracking all of it. And, and they have the kids write papers on what mommy and daddy are doing. That's actually going in government databases. Well, that's right. And let me point out that our governor just last week, the same so-called conservative governor con controlled by the Heritage Foundation, he he uh, ex issued an executive order uh, for the digitalization of all education. Now, that's the computer. And let me point out again, I think I said it in the last time with Alex, that once your child is on the computer, uh, Benjamin Bloom said, you know, I can take a child from here to there in their values in one hour. All right, the computer is his uh, Skinner's box. Uh, the computer is so dangerous. The head of the World Institute of Computer for Assisted Teaching said uh, about 20 years ago, he was so proud. His name is Dustin Houston. He's so proud. He said, won't it be wonderful when the, uh, the, the child in the remotest area of the country can have access to the, the views, the help of the finest psychologists in the world? and nobody can get between that child and the curriculum. Now, look, folks, ho wait a minute. Think about that. You thought you had a hard time getting curriculum out of the, your local school board? You will never know what they're doing to your child. They're going to wreck his attitudes, values, and beliefs. They want to create the new Soviet man. That is their goal. And that, don't, it didn't die in 1990. That was the biggest farce that ever happened. They had to make you think it was dead, because how could they possibly have put this in if you would continue to be well, look at the EU. Look at the EU. I mean, all the mega banks funded the Soviets, but the EU admits they're the new Soviet, and they're, they're literally making all the laws for the people, and now exactly. they're having them sign agreements where the countries can never get out again, and admitting that the new EU Soviet is run by six banks who you pay your taxes to and you have no local authority. Well, the people, you know, you asked me again, we have got to, you know, Sam says something about, I really appreciate my son, what's what I said. He said, nobody is guarding the castle. And what he means is nobody's at home. You see, they got the moms out of the home. Nobody's guarding the castle. Nobody's guarding the children. Nobody's there to listen to the radio to find out when town meetings are taking place. Nobody's there to watch what's going on in the community. Nobody is guarding the castle. The castle is our home. They want to take our castle away, too. You know, they're going to take the older people's castles away. In England, you heard that, Alex. 
anybody, you know, in their late 70s or 80s who lives in a lovely house in a beautiful property, they say, no, no, that's not fair. They should get out and live in a nice little assisted living No, place. I saw that in the BBC. They're now yeah. saying you own your own land, you're going to be forced to sell it and move the other people in. Uh, absolutely. So people in the castle, please, folks, maybe you're not guarding your castle. You're both going to have to go to work. Maybe there's some people who are out of jobs now who better take up the mantle and try to save this country and go to every single local meeting. Get my book, because that's the history of it, the deliberate dumbing down of America. It's political history as well in there. Get it, buy it in boxes, get cases of it, and get Rosa's book, Behind the Green Mask. Those two books, there may be other books out there, and I don't mean to, you know, cut other people out of that, but I do believe you cannot do anything unless you are informed. You have to have ammunition. You can't win a war without ammunition. The ammunition is in my book and Rose's book. All right, let me stop you again for a moment here. Again, former head of policy, number two, Department of Education, when you discovered all of this, and again, the book, Deliberate Dumbing Down, uh, and now the green uh, behind the green mask are both available at infowars.com if folks want to get those and support both the off, uh, authors and our uh, operation here this is a new type of authoritarianism it's creeping uh, it's run by the mega corporations so it's corporatist and bureaucratic at the same time it's this merger of fascism and communism that you talked about uh, in the congressional hearings it became evident was the plan of the Ford Foundation. Those documents uh, were covered up for a while. You were able to get them. They're on your website, your son's website. Uh, Anthony Sutton exposed it as well. This is a diabolical program that's now out in the open. Ban Kai moon last week said world government and uh, to fund uh, social services that will be in all your homes. The UN must make sure you're raising your children right. The first, he was being honest. World government to be in your house. World government to be on your farm. The predator drones watching the farmers, watching the rural people. They want us under Agenda 21. And here we are. It's happening. It's unfolding. And I don't want people to be scared because the globalists are freaking out, saying there's a huge awakening. But we've got to wake up to what's going on. We've got to wake up to, to what's happening because it's now unfolding right now. But I wanted to specifically ask you, uh, about uh, you know, where this stuff came from. I know that in an earlier interview you broke that down, but, but, but break down where it came from, how the eugenics ties in. Well, I think that the eugenics goes all the way back to Germany and, uh, you know, the, Bush, the families that uh, financed all of the eugenics. And that's not my field, Alex. You're, you're, uh, I mean, I know about it, but I'm not one to give a lecture on eugenics. But uh, it does come uh, from the, uh, I think, and I don't like to admit this, but I do believe that the order at Yale, uh, more and more research that I do with the help of Anthony Sutton's great book on the establishment, uh, I believe that's where it came from. That's the Illuminati. And... Uh, in Germany, the order was based on the Illuminati, and then the the order was responsible for sending educators over to Leipzig, uh, Germany, to study under Wilhelm Wundt. And we can trace his his grandfather was uh, a member of the Illuminati. Very interesting. Wilhelm Wundt is the founder of uh, operant conditioning, that the Skinner Pavlovian method. Pavlov studied in the Pavlov didn't invent it. He went to one's laboratory and learned how to, uh, through stimulus response, through the, the nervous system, neurological responses, how to control people's behavior with uh, rewards and punishment. Okay? Pre-program responses. But Charlotte, there you go again. You're always saying you're not an expert. I've researched your uh, wound info, your skull and bones info. That is exactly what the British and German scientists funded by the proto-robber barons we're doing was looking at a scientific model 
to control populations. And the Prussians, as you know, had been good at yeah. slave soldiers that were so brainwashed, they didn't even know that they were slaves, the Hessians. Yeah. And so you're absolutely right. And then Skull and Bones, when you say the order that your father and grandfather were part of, you've gone through the documents, which are you know, incredibly conclusive, that yes, it was another center point of expanding this operant conditioning, uh, rat training, dog training into our society. Uh, and so you are an expert on this, and that is eugenics, and that's where it all came out of, was in that study 250 years ago of how to scientifically control people. And so out of it came the operant conditioning, the eugenics, all these schools, which then the system built as our modern world that is almost complete and is really a false uh, reality. I mean, it's a false artificial, uh, artificial environment like at a zoo or something that they've built for us. And now they're trying to finally end the family, in the home. And it's because people, as you said, don't understand that to own a home, to, to have the right uh, of, of the Second Amendment, to have the right to raise your children and to not be a slave, that was fought for over thousands of years by humanity. And so we only had a short period of some basic liberty. Now the tyranny is just coming back in. Please continue. Well, I think it, we have to look at the uh, why, how did this happen? Uh, Wilhelm Wundt, of course, he was a uh, psychologist, and uh, he believed that man was an animal uh, without a soul. That's, that's the key. You see, they, they believe, they really do believe that they're animals and that we have no soul, we have no free will. And uh, if that's the case, then we can be trained to do what they want. It's very, very simple. It's, it's a tragedy. And uh, as C.S. Lewis said, you know, when, when education, uh, when we give up on education and we move towards training, civilization dies. Now, that's very important. Do we want civilization to die? I mean, Aristotle was also the one who said something about, uh, you know, he who does not have an education can be compared to someone who's dead. That's a you know that uh, that's basically what Aristotle said. So what we're doing here is we're we're not going to be educating anymore. We're going to be training, training for the workforce, training for the global. The, our children are considered nothing but resources to spin off profits for the global economy. That is exactly it. And the tragedy here. I guess it wouldn't really make too much difference who was doing it, but I, I am absolutely devastated by the fact that the conservative movement is equally responsible, if not more, in a way more, because nobody suspected them. Uh, this is what's the tragedy to me. I mean, I spent, what, 40 years now, and I trusted all these people. And they may not all be so bad, but they won't tell the truth. You know, if you tell the truth, you're you're on the you know what list, and they're not telling the truth because they want to keep their you're organizations right. going, keep funding coming in, and that makes me sick because these are it's our children's futures. And we're giving the whole world to the scientific dictators when their white papers are all public. Going back over 100 plus years, we see them following their program of a bunch of inbred royalty that funded eugenicists and psych warfare experts for brain war, as Hitler called it. Yeah. And look what they're producing. When you believe that humans are made in the image of God and can reach for the stars, you get Beethoven, uh, you get science, you get space exploration, yes. you get beauty, you get strong families. I didn't know you had that sort of beautiful uh, side to your uh, means of expression. That's beautiful. See? But just to finish that statement, when they believe we're ugly animals, look at the fruits of the New World Order now that they've been in control. Uglier, dumber, uh, just just filthy, just the culture is like a sewage pipe busted open. And the elite themselves are not immune from this. It's blowing back on them and they're becoming more and more twisted. I mean, they have opened hell's gates. Well, they have, and they, you know, religion is out, out the window. And uh, before I forget, I, you know, because we're talking about what can we do? Well, all of us should become very active at the local level and watch the state too. And the state planning office, if I were you, I would go to the state planning office and I would ask for every single document uh, out of UN Agenda 21. You want to see all of it and uh, become, become informed. 
and, and then go back, do your homework, go to your local community, don't allow any of these changes to be made unless they've been completely researched and that there is no federal uh, or international influence in them, right? Uh, now, the other thing, the most important thing, is, of course, is prayer. Please, what religion you are, but pray. Pray that we can extricate ourselves from this evil totalitarian system that once, once it's gone, once we've lost this freedom, that's the end. I think it was George Orwell who said something about once we let it go, freedom go, he said, that's it. He said, it's like somebody putting their boot in your face and that's the end and it won't come back. So don't say to yourself, well, I don't know if I think I can find the time to do that or I don't know, whatever you can, don't, don't allow yourself to find a single excuse. Exactly. Orwell and said, start- Orwell said, uh, O'Brien's torturing Winston, and he says, do you want to know what the future is, Winston, as Winston's being basically tortured to death and, and, and brainwashed and broken? And he says, what is it? And he says, it's a boot stomping on a human face forever. The future we're bu- uh, building, Winston, is not more beautiful or something that gets better. It's trampling and being trampled upon, more ugly, more twisted, Winston. It's about pressing on the nerve of power. We're the priest of power. It's about ugliness, Winston. Look at my face, Winston. You think I look ugly and burn out? That's the vigor of the hatred destroying humanity. We love death. We are psychopaths that enjoy ugliness. That's, you know what? That's the whole quote. It's, it's really very good. And of course, Orwell, he knew because he was part of the group that was involved in the Fabian planning. socialist. Yes. And so he knew. I mean, we've learned an awful lot from these people. I, we should really thank them, like Bertrand Russell and, and George Orwell. They've told us what's coming. We should thank them, but we don't listen. We just think, oh, that's, a, that's something that my teacher gave me to read. Oh, maybe they did about 40 years ago. Uh, so, but the point is we cannot, you have to ask yourself, uh, do you really want to live in this kind of a, a world? I mean, it's hard to believe that anybody would want to. That's the question you ask yourself and you think, oh, well, they couldn't want that. So it's not going to happen. Well, they do want it, evidently. They have sick in their heads. They do want it. And uh, now that we found out that the school choice agenda is nothing other than the Trojan horse to lock up this whole communist state planning economic system, that's what school choice is all about. That's what our brilliant researchers, many better than I am, have been pointing out for 20 25 years and nobody would listen. Well, people are listening now, and it's covered in the book, Deliberate Dumbing Down of America, available at Infowars.com. But let me just add this. Notice Bill Gates, the admitted eugenicist whose dad ran Planned Parenthood. He is at the tip of the spear for school choice, but it's not choice. It's these charter schools and others where they control the curriculum that's this brainwashing training stuff. He is at the tip of the spear with GMOs that sterilize people, the forced vaccines. He's at the tip of the spear on every New World Order, North American Union issue. And there he is taking over the education and turning it from a classical education into this dog training. And now I've read the curriculum at public schools. The feds have had 1984 pulled in the last decade out of all the schools. Kendall's had it erased. Now they're actually memory holding it. Uh, and again, they're just racing through with their program. In closing, uh, Charlotte, an amazing interview. In the last three or four minutes we've got left, other points that you think are important to add to the viewers out there? Uh, I'd like them to spend some time um, on my website. Uh, I've written a lot of articles. There's an article there that has to do with uh, the letter I wrote to Ronald Reagan after I was... uh, before I was dismissed from my job, explaining what was going on with the Marxist Department of Ed. And there are quite a few articles of mine that people should read in regard to regionalism and uh, what's happening. I don't think there's any subject that I've touched on, a school choice touched on today that I haven't written about. And uh, also my son's website, americandeception.com, the 3,000 pages of the Reese Committee uh, hearings 
on the investigation of the tax exempt foundations in 1953. The hearings are there for people to uh, to read. I bought the last copy, it cost me three thousand dollars, but that was nothing compared to what uh, Robert Goldsborough sold me. That for three thousand dollars, he'd been offered any amount of money by the, one of the minions of the foundations about 30 years ago, any amount of money to get that one copy. So folks, you know what? Take advantage of the fact that that one copy is up on the internet at americadeception.com and find out what these tax exempt foundations have done to bring this country, this great country of ours, uh, to the, the, the state where it is today, where I'm discussing this with you today. Please find out. And then the other thing is, I just want to, uh, tell all of you that thank you so much for uh, your support uh, through the years and Alex especially and his crew there. I don't know where we would be. We would be so much worse off. Can you imagine? That's the one thing I want to say. You know, don't give up. Do not give up because they, in quotes, planned on taking us down around in the 70s. That was planned with uh, the Declaration of uh, Interdependence, et cetera. And the people, a lot of them are gone now, great people like Maureen Heaton and Robert Morris and all. I name all of them, acknowledgments in my book. They're gone. They fought the great battle for you and your families. And if they hadn't, I would not be on the show now with Alex. Alex probably wouldn't even have been born by when they were when they were working, you know, because you're very young, Alex, compared to all of us. And uh, if it had not been for those people, so look at it this way: you may get discouraged. Don't give up, because there's always hope. I mean, we thought back seventy five in 1975, 1980 that we were going down. We didn't because of the work of all these great people, many of them whom are, are now gone. You're right. Many Let me just add a point there now that you raise that, and I'll, because this is this is so deep what you're talking I think this is the best interview we've ever done, Charlotte. It's, 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 it covers so many facets. The, the globalist power is also their weakness. Because it's a stealth takeover, it's very hard to wake people up. But because it's stealth, when we do fight it, we're able to reverse it, especially when people see that it's been hidden and deceptive. And so the globalists, the big number Zinsky, Hillary Clinton, he's got a new book out admitting that the globalists are starting to lose. Hillary says they're starting to lose the info war. And that's why we're seeing such an energetic fight now out of them is because they are cornered rats. That's why they want to kick off new wars. They want to do all of this false flag terror attacks to try to scare us back into submission. But the sleeping giant is awakening thanks to your work and so many others. And now, because you were there 20 plus years ago and other people 30, 40 years ago, because you were there 30 years ago and got laughed at, now that all this stuff's coming true and global governments being admitted and global carbon taxes, and now that they're admitting all this evil and now that they see when states are trying to pass laws for forced inoculation and laws for forced fluoride, and now that people are getting CPS visits over homeschooling, I mean, we're now to the line. We've held them, held them, held them, but they've still kept pushing. And now it's right up to the point of where now the authoritarianism, the NDAA saying they'll secretly arrest citizens and have us disappear into black holes, uh, the SOPA bills for censorship. I mean, the enemy has uncloaked Charlotte. And I think what you're saying here today is now is the time that they've uncloaked and people are really ready to finally wake up. They're uncloaked because they've uncloaked to fire on us. And it's like a Klingon attack cruiser. It's uncloaked because it's firing on us right now. I mean, this is it. This is it. This I, I don't know how to break it down for folks. I, Ten years ago, I got chills once a month when I saw a piece of news. I get chills every five minutes now. You know, my sixth sense. Uh, can you feel it as well? Oh, yes, I, I can. And I, I think, of, uh, you know, in terms of what they're doing out in California, there's no reason why we can't all be doing the same thing and uh in that I, I watched those videos out of the bay bay area right yes and there was a very important uh, uh testimony from a young man who said that uh, i think he came from eastern europe romania yes. and he talked to these regional types that are trying to ram this communism down the throats of the people in the bay area and he said look he said you may have the best interests of all of us at heart but you don't know what you're doing he said, this is the system of Eastern Europe. 
He said, this is the way we lived. And he said, it was horrible. We didn't have enough food. We didn't have this. And what are you, what are you doing? And that was a very, very, it's always good to have someone who's been through it to come out. And, and then the other thing, Alex, that I just noticed, and this must be going on in all the states right now, uh, we have, we're reshaping our whole form of government in our state. And I don't know whether you all have this going on, but Brookings Institute came into our state about four years ago. And then uh, the Heritage Foundation took it over. And it, it's a report, it calls for reshaping government, re reducing the legislature size, dumping outdated programs, chop the number of counties and have judge state progress by what outcomes okay it goes on and on now this is our conservative governor who accepted this report from brookings institute so watch your state i think i talked about this about a year ago with you alex you did. yes yes we did so they're changing our whole form of government they're dropping borders they're getting rid of a half of our legislators they're We're saying your state doesn't get your own money we took from you unless you pass our little federal test they're turning us into a pigeon or a rat trained right. to do the problem and get a piece of grain well there's a very interesting uh quote in my book deliberate dumbing down it's it's from bf skinner back in the 70s at a meeting up in mendocino california of behavioral psychologists it was top secret that meeting right and he said there that in the future uh we're gonna have a lot of upheaval in this country because People aren't going to want to have to go along with the requirements of the environment and ecology like we're talking about today, right? People are going to get mad. And he said, rather than using the police and all, he said, the best thing is to use operant conditioning, uh, rewards and punishment. Now, that's a direct quote. It's in my book. Now, what you see right here going in is exactly what Skinner recommended back in the 70s. And he said, better to do that than to use the police. So right in our little town of Bath I used to live in, we have, as people know out there, community-oriented policing system. Now, if grandma is crossing the street with a bag of groceries and somebody helps grandma, they're going to go up to that person and give them a gold medal. Now, I'm not kidding, folks. That is going on right here. If you do what the government wants and the police decide what's the right thing to do, huh? Think whether it's a good deed or not, they give you a gold medal. Now, they're keeping a record in the computer in Augusta, our state capital, of all the people who do the good deeds. Now, I think also they're probably keeping a record of people like no, myself. No, that's priming the pump to put people in there who've, uh, who said bad stuff about the government, but they start the database in a way that sounds good. And now in Texas, they tried to pass a law that if you've spoken bad about the government or police, they put it in a database. So, yes, it's Pavlovian training, priming the pump. Uh, you know, for for your 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 mandatory volunteerism, you get your taxes cut and stuff. Correct. Community service, and the thing is, the bottom line is this, Alex. Once a human being becomes conditioned to uh, getting rewards for doing what the government wants, you know, they are never going to take a stand against the government for fear of punishment. See, this is what we're developing. We're developing people that are totally dependent upon rewards for doing what the government wants. Well, Charlotte, I really appreciate you doing this extended interview. It was an hour long now. I meant it to be 25, 30 minutes, but it's always so amazing having you on. And all the points you bring up just light fires in my mind of recognition, data points. Everything you're saying is so true. And then some, and I could see that fire in your eyes and you know, hear it in your voice that you've got so much knowledge. What you're talking about is so real, and you just want people to look into it for themselves. I can see that uh, you were doing the interview via uh, light through the window, and it's now gotten dark there in Maine. Uh, so uh, uh, I think that's a sign for us to end this interview. I'm about to end the show, and then I'm going to come back and say bye to you at the end. But you're a sweetheart, and uh, we would be in a lot more trouble today if it wasn't for you and doing all the great things you've done. Well, you too, Alex, and all your great listeners and uh, your staff. I just love those young guys. I, I wish I, I really want all of you, all of you, to come up here and visit. We'll just have fun. Rob Dew said, and uh, Aaron and others said it was really great hanging out with you. He said you made him great dinner and cookies too. <laughs> oh, oh well, I was pretty tired, but it turned out okay. I think there was a little bit of wine that evening. Oh, and cigars. I wasn't going to mention that part. Oh, yeah, and cigar. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> well, you know what? We all have to keep our sense of humor. We have to continue. Hey, I want one right now. All right, I'll say bye to you in a sec. Thank you. And thank your son, a uh, great patriot in his own right, for driving up to your house to help you with the Skype. Thank you, Alex. And goodbye, everybody. All right. There she goes. <laughs> what a great lady. You can't just have her on for 25 minutes. That's why I'm kind of bemoaning cutting the show to 30 minutes and getting her ready for TV. We kind of been in the beta testing mode right now. We're already reaching over a million a week just on YouTube and places like that. Uh, and of course, you, the subscribers watching it live, uh, the, the tape shows we are at seven o'clock. Sometimes we do it live. It's an amazing interview with her. Uh, folks, this is real. And it's so creeping. It's all wrapped in this sicky, sweet propaganda. But when you find out this is really true, I know you'll want to take action. And I, and I know a lot of you know it's true, but do something about it. Don't you have a fire in your belly if you knew your neighbor was stealing stuff out of your garage to, you know, catch him doing it again and punch him in the nose? Well, aren't you mad at the globalists trying to wreck our society and take over, land of the free, home of the brave, and use America as an engine of evil empire worldwide? The globalists, what they're doing is so evil that if we just call them on it, they'll fall like a house of cards. Get the book, Deliberate Dumbing Down of America at InfoWars.com. That's an amazing book. Support the offer uh, and our operation as well. We've got a 15-day free trial also still running. Uh, if you want to check out and try out PrisonPlanet.tv, if you're watching elsewhere on the web, I want to thank all the members. You pay it forward. Uh, you uh, fund this entire operation so we can produce the news every night that then purposefully leaks out to millions. So God bless you on that front as well. And great job to the crew. They just do an exemplary job, even with a skeleton crew while Rob Dew is on vacation. And uh, we will see you back, Lord willing, tomorrow evening, 7 o'clock Central, and at PrisonPlanet.com and InfoWars.com. I'm Alex Jones signing off from the front lines of the InfoWar.